It's that time again. It's the Berkey and the Badger Board Game Babble Show. It's going to get wild. It's going to get wacky. It might even get a little zany. We're going to talk about board games and the board game industry. And, you know, we might talk about anything else we want to talk about. Yeah, that's right, baby. Yes. Ed Barry, you're here. How are you, buddy? I'm fine, thank you very much. Another morning call for me. Oh, you look beautiful, darling. Beautiful, darling. (laughs) Hey, it's the Berkey and Badger Show, and we are so glad we're on air. We're live. So if sometimes technology does some crazy stuff when you're live. And uh, last time we uh, had a wonderful uh, interview with Robert Searing, uh, but my end had some problems, and just that's the way it is. We apologize for those things, but... As we can improve, we will, but we are so excited. One thing we wanted to talk about really quick, though, in our production, you know, Barry and I have been friends for a while, and we just said, wouldn't this be a big blast just to get together, talk about board games, have fun, and allow our wacky, zany personalities just to, just to have, have some fun online. And the show has developed from them. Uh, we're really a couple of monkeys with keyboards, so, hey... <laughs> <laughs> Jump in here, enjoy it. You know, it is what it is. Uh, we're excited about our hobby, and uh, and this is just a great time. So, Barry, what you been up to, buddy? Uh, what have I been up to? Ah, uh, um, sleeping recently. But um, yeah, um, I've um, I'm, I'm getting together a gaming group, uh, a proper oh, an association. Pardon, it's called an association here in France. Um, so I've been going through paperwork and and all kinds of things and he says looking at his computer and clicking on the buttons yeah if you if you if you're listening to this on a podcast we do a live video version of this so you can look at us in our pajamas and you can look at the images that we flop up on screen like this one yes i've got an association called uh, paradis ludic yes i nick chaz's idea i like the word paradise so much ah. so yeah I get an association together, a gaming group here in France, in my village, um, and the first one is this week, and um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm very nervous because I've had to learn all the rules in French, and oh, but um, yeah, that's what I've been up to this this week. How about that you? Sounds, that sounds like a lot of fun, man. Well, we've been uh, getting ready to go to Gen Con, and in this show, we're going to talk a little bit, do a wrap-up show. We have a special guest with us, Suzanne Sheldon. Uh, it's exciting. Welcome, Suzanne. Hello. Woohoo! Woohoo! Yay! 4 a.m. for Barry. Woohoo! <laughs> I knew Barry once we'd get Suzanne on the show, we finally arrived, so I'm really excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we've been getting ready for Gen Con. Uh, Suzanne's going to talk a little bit about Gen Cant, which is going to be a lot of fun. And we actually got to. Uh, visit a little bit while we were at Dice Tower Con and we're going to do a wrap-up show but I've been getting ready to go to Gen Con and it's amazing how much stuff there is to do. Um, We're doing a gig with Arcane Wonders and I will be reprising my role as the Sheriff of Nottingham. Look at this. Here we go. Come on baby. Can you see that? Now, that is my daughter, Maddie. She's part of uh, Maddie's Millinery and Costumers, where they make these amazing costumes. They sell them all over the world. They've sold them to 19 countries. And uh, she made a custom costume from the Silk Merchant artwork from Arcane Wonders. And Maddie and I are going to be at the Arcane Wonders booth Friday, 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock, and then at 4 o'clock for the drawings on Friday and Saturday. And uh, we're going to be there. Their Arcane Wonders is doing some awesome contests, and uh, we're going to be there having fun with that, handing out some gifts and different ideas, and uh, we're also going to get involved in the cosplay costume. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. That's, that's going to be... That, that's why your beard was looking a bit authoritative, because it... Yes. Um, hmm. I must be noble with my beard, sir. <laughs> 
But anyway, while we're at Gen Con, if you guys uh, happen to be there and you stop by the Arcane, Arcane Wonders booth or you see us walking around the halls, we would love to talk to you, take a picture with you. And we're actually going to be doing a contest, Board Game Theater is, where we will be giving away a copy of Sheriff of Nottingham, Operation Faust, promo cards from Sheriff of Nottingham. And uh, we're just going to have a blast, and uh, I'm super pumped about it. I think that's almost like you have an unfair advantage in the cosplay contest because I've seen the work that your daughter does and it is crazy good. So I don't know. It's like tilting the scales unevenly maybe a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I don't know. You know. We've never done this thing before. We've got a little two-minute uh, thing scheduled uh, where you, we have a musical intro, but we're actually set up to be in the professional... Uh, category. So we're going to be against some tough competition, but we're going to do our best to represent Arcane Wonders and the costume company and just really have fun. So I'm awesome. just wondering how many people are going to become dressed up as a meeple. <laughs> just you, Barry. <laughs> Hello. My name's George. I've come as a yellow meeple. Oh, there's another yellow meeple over there. Hey, why can't you be a different color, like a red or something? Come on. Come on, come on with us, like original. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, uh, if anybody is online, uh, we will take questions uh, periodically through the show on Twitter. You can uh, reach Barry. You think you can see his Twitter feed uh, there? Let's put it up. Yeah, there we go. There's my Twitter feed. I will flick at that. And because we've had to technically transfer this video onto YouTube directly, you should be able to type in on YouTube, and we should be able. To, oh, I should be able to click at the comments there. So, uh, if you got anything you want to add, just just add it. Just add it. Well, I'll give you a little bit of a rundown of the show. What we're going to be doing. Uh, the first thing that we have is our news segment. Things that make you go hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we have the good, the not so bad, and the ugly segment where we talk about a few board games that we've been looking at. And then we're doing our special. What game is behind the door with our special guest, Suzanne? And then we'll do our babble topic, which we're going to have a lot of fun talking about Gen Con, Gen Cant, and all of that. And so I think what we'll do is we'll just get started right off the bat and talk about uh, uh, things that make you go, hmm, Barry. Hmm, yeah, sorry, I was... <laughs> I can't end my code. I've been locked out. This is good radio. Oh, yeah, this is great radio, baby. <laughs> yeah, things, things, that, that. things that make you go and don't have a theme tune. It's the news that has a theme tune. Oh, yeah, yeah that is news. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, paper, paper, ruffles. <laughs> okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the news. Things that make us go home. That's what threw me, Kev. You said things that make you go home, and I forgot that it's news section. Oh, it's 5 a.m. I get it. We need some coffee. Yeah, so, things that make us go home. Um, 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 did you want to start on this one? Or well, I, I, saw, I saw something that was kind of cool, and um, what really drew my attention to it, I haven't played it yet, but Fantasy Flight Games is reprinting The Fury of Dracula. Ooh. I, I didn't I didn't I didn't take time to copy the URL, but if you have a chance to go to the Discriminating Gamer and you can see a video that he did dressed up as a vampire <laughs> talking to <laughs> Fantasy Flight to reprint this game. It's absolutely hilarious. And uh they took his advice, I guess, or he would bite his neck. Yes, I love the legumes. Legumes is a French word. Mm. <laughs> One, two, three. Ah, 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 the vodka. Ah, ah. I love to count. This is my third vodka of the morning. <laughs> More vodka. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Suzanne, have you played Fury of Dracula? I haven't. I haven't had a chance because it's. It, I, I have it, and I am, I'm, I'm first in line for it when it comes out. I'm super excited when when I saw that news. Cool. Yeah, I I got letters of Whitechapel, so I'll stick with that for the moment. 
which is I know people thing. love it. People mm. love it. I saw the Dice Tower guys were talking about it, Sam and and Tom and Z and Sam was kind of skeptical because he thought, you know, I I love the way it was, you know, just the way we were. And but the other guys are kind of excited that there's something new coming and streamlined a little bit. So we'll see. Okay. What do you got? What have I got? Well, I just I've been looking at my the, the Trick Track site, which is um, a French equivalent of Board Game Geek, and I've been seeing this thing called ePorn. Now, don't get scared. It's nothing rude, Suzanne. It's ePorn. It's ePorn. Oh, sorry, it's my accent. Yes. <laughs> I got this. Um, in an image of it, and basically, it's um, it was up on Kickstarter a while ago. Not too long ago, but it's been cancelled due to the fact that um, it's not going to get the, thund the funding that it needs. And it's basically, um, you use your iPhone to control these little mini bot things. And yeah, you're thinking, what's that got to do with board games? Well, the fact of the matter is that, yeah, you could just drive a little uh, buggy around a little course on your table. But uh, they also had the rights to do Wings of War. As you can see, there's a little aeroplane in the background there. Oh, yeah. And yeah, so um, it had board game implications as well. You could play chess. You know, that's just like a basic idea. But they're, they're, you know, technology in board gaming on a miniature scale, you know, this little thing on a sensor pad, um, and it moves by itself. You know, you could program your action. Imagine Robo, Robo Rally. You program it all onto your phone, what your actions yeah. are, and then you push, all push a button, and they all, all the robots activate at the same time and crash into each other, and oh, chaos, chaos. Um, but unfortunately, as I said, this was up on Kickstarter and it's been cancelled. So maybe in the future, like, this will come out again. Um, I don't know if it's going to like make people want to be it, because us board gamers are a bit technophobes, aren't we? I saw Probably. some notification on Gen Con. Actually, there was uh, one of the emails that had a reference to them actually having a demo at Gen Con. So that's interesting. Hmm. Okay, so you're hmm. going to be looking out for that. That made you go, yeah. hmm. <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> We're all doing hmm. <laughs> 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 hey, I wanted to mention too, and uh, thanks for uh, uh, writing this in the notes too, Barry, but one of our good friends, uh, Rodney Smith, from Watch It Played is running an Indiegogo campaign and uh, I've had the opportunity to talk with uh, Rodney several times and met him at Gen Con here a couple years ago and co corresponded with him. I haven't actually sat down to play a game with him but he's one of the guys when I really started getting into board gaming as far as into some of the deeper games that I was able to go to his site and see how to play a game and he explains things so well his production quality is off the hook and uh, this guy just works really hard to do a good job and uh, I just I just think he's really a, a super guy but he's doing a Nidigoko campaign to raise funds for his show and uh, I've been backing him and if you guys uh, have it in your budget man I just highly recommend a look at his stuff anyway and if you've got the disposable income to help him out I'm sure he'd sure appreciate it what do you got to say about that Barry yes Rodney is the best Rodney's oh he's written on this piece of paper yeah Rodney oh, yeah. is um is a great guy um he's very friendly if you write him a message he'll send you one back Maybe that'll change in the future when he's got 10 million followers and he can't write back and his fingers are not possible. But, um, yeah, he's he's a very professional uh, approach to YouTube videos and us board gamers, which is fantastic. A lot more professional than me. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, what you, um, yeah. Do you know Rodney, uh, Suzanne? Yeah, I know him a little bit, and, and he's wonderful. And uh, he's... a uh, He's he's saved my hide a few times when I've been in you know a jam to learn a game. Like if I knew a game was going to be played, but I didn't own it and I need to learn it, you know, just fire up YouTube and um, it's always a bummer for me when I go to look like oh I need to learn this game and then he just doesn't happen to have a, a video for it yet and then I'm I'm kind of stuck. I have, like if he doesn't have a video, I basically have no idea how I'm going to learn a game. <laughs> and I just kind of <laughs> sit there and like look around. I'm like oh no, you know, and and I 
you know, pray to the lords of Canada that it'll somehow magically <laughs> appear. Uh, it hasn't worked yet, but fingers crossed on that. Would you um, get that video up there, eh? <laughs> <laughs> who, I will say, I, back, I supported him last year, and I, I got, like, the promo pack that, that, you know, was kind of a thank you for supporting him. Oh, and cool. one of the promos was... Uh, his his family's in a lot of the promos, you know, his son, his daughter, and himself. But for the game Xeno Shift, he oh. is a card in Xeno Shift, and I gotta say, it's a really cool card. But it's so weird to see Rodney's head on this like this huge, you know, soldier army, like ah, like looking. I don't know. It's a little weird whenever it comes up. I'm like, okay, but uh, I'm glad I have it. Yeah, it's cool. He's got that ferocious look on his face. He's right? like, ah! really, Rodney? No. <laughs> so, yeah. No, I, I hope I hope he's has a really successful campaign because I, I I feel like he adds so much to our community. It's really invaluable. Yeah, I really agree too. One thing I like about what he's doing, and not that this is the Love Rodney show, but um, I really <laughs> enjoy uh, when he has Luke on the show, his son. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, he's such a cutie, but uh, he's uh, uh, he just you can tell he loves to play games with his family, and that's something we enjoy too. So it's uh, that's a neat thing. And so Barry, mm -hmm. Barry, we're just supposed to fill up some space here. We're gonna actually gonna go into our next segment shortly, <laughs> called the good, the not so bad. And the ugly. And I'm going to explain what that is. This is our rating system at the Berkey and Badger Board Game Babble Show. And what we basically are doing is we pick a theme for our good, the not so bad, and the ugly segment. In this theme, the good is going to be a game that we recommend highly. We love this game. We think you'll enjoy it. Uh, it's well produced and all of that. If we rate it not so bad, that, what we're saying is that, well, it's it's a good game, but maybe we had a little problem with something. You know, maybe the components were a little subpar. Or perhaps there was uh, uh, something in that. Thanks a lot, Barry. <laughs> Love you, man. Love you. So, Squirrel. No, that's another podcast. <laughs> oh, you're going to get in trouble. Yeah, I know. I don't even have a selfie stick. <laughs> Somebody will get that. Uh, but if, if it's not so bad, we like the game. We think it's okay. We kind of half-heartedly recommend it. But if it's ugly, that means we hate this game. We hate it. We don't recommend it. We don't play it. We're close to burning it, throwing it off the roof, whatever we got to do, right? So this week's theme is Dungeons and Dragons. Go ahead, play it now. I know you're itching. Go for it. I couldn't, I couldn't find it. The good! The not so bad! Wait for it! Well, this week's theme is the good as uh, Dungeons and Dragons. For our good image, we have found something that came out of Dungeons and Dragons that was wonderfully good. You see that? A D20. Yay! Times above all the rest. And then as our not so bad, look what this guy is. Who's this guy? I don't know. Who is he? Uh, I recognize him. There he is. Why would you say Gen Can? Why? Why? Mm -hmm. It's because... This is Sir Peter Atkinson, the new CEO of Gen Con. He used to work for Wizards of the Coast, as I understand it. He purchased Gen Con. I actually had a neat story about Peter. I was at St. Arbuck's getting some coffee at the Westin Hotel and uh, ended up standing in line. This is the first time I went to Gen Con and here I'm standing next to him and I introduced myself, he introduces himself and he said, are you the guy that runs this place? <laughs> he goes, yeah. We had about a 15 minute talk as we waited in line for coffee and uh, just had a great time talking to him. 
Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yes. Yeah, that was pretty neat. Shimp was an Alvis. Well, for our ugly image... Yes, I have it ready. Oh, don't push the wrong button. Oh, you've done it. Oh, no. Who wrote this miserable script? Yes, it's the Dungeons and Dragons film. It's a nasty film. I took oh. it. When I first met my wife, my after before my wife, but the, the woman that was is my wife. That yeah. So our first date was to go to the cinema, and we watched this film, and it was I was embarrassed. I thought I'd oh. lost her. Dreadful. <laughs> it was ugly. ugly. It was ugly. <laughs> you could tell those guys hate themselves for being in it, even so. Well, so what have you been playing, Barry, then? Let's uh, let's just jump right into it. All right, jump straight in. This came here with a big dragon. Yes. This is Descent, the second edition. I got, I, I, I got it, and um, I've been playing it, and I'm looking for the image that I want, which is that one there. But And it's a, it's a dungeon calling game, and I like dungeon calling games because I got Hero Quest, and I got Dungeons & Dragons, the... Uh, board game itself as well so uh, uh, I'm used to playing dungeon crawls where it's one person playing as the bad guy and then lots of people playing as a team and then you set up this dungeon and adventure you have a little story and you basically got an objective each so the bad guy's got an objective he's either got to get a certain amount of monsters to do certain things and you've got to stop those monsters or collect treasure or something or other and uh, you do this back and forth of moving and attacking um, there's a few other things that you might want to do as well, uh, like dialogue or converse. And um, it's a very popular game. It's very beautiful looking. And um, what do you think I think about this game? Oh, what do I think you think? This is uh, where we guess, uh, Suzanne, what uh, he rates this game. Good, not so bad, or ugly. Uh, Barry, I think... In fact... We're going to do ladies first here. Suzanne, we're going to give you a shot on this one. All right. I think he rated it a good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go right along with it. I think women's intuition has that one locked up. Uh, uh, Barry, I, knowing you and your, your love for miniatures, and uh, you got to be on this one. Uh, I, I so do want to think this one is good. But it's not bad. Uh, yeah, shock to the system. Um, I'll explain why I think it's not bad. For me at the moment, I have the French copy. I have it in version Francais. And um, to, to understand all the text, because there's quite a lot of text on the cards, I have to spend oh. a lot of time translating. And uh, also the story as well. There's a lot of story because, because it's like a scenario. You have one mission, then you have another mission, then you have another mission. And for me, it's just a bit overwhelming. Again, I haven't played it with the perfect group. I've played it with guys that just sit at the table and look at the, the miniatures and go, I'll go there. Well, in French, obviously. Oh, je bougie mon pion là. And I don't know. I, pl playing Hero Quest before with my friends... Uh, back in the UK, we had fun because we were we were in the characters and everything. And I'm trying to get into the character, and I'm trying to read this text, and I, I just don't feel the ambience. Um, but I'm hoping that as my French develops, and maybe if I play with the right group of people, this game will be the good game because it looks beautiful. It looks fantastic. And awesome. you, have you played this? I haven't played this. Uh, I hear a lot of good things about it from some of the people in our circles. But, uh, Suzanne, have you played that? I, Descent 2nd Edition? Yes. Yeah, I've, I've definitely played Descent 2nd Edition, and I quite like it. Um, I don't think I've played the scenario that, that Barry just showed with the dragon and things like that. I played a, an earlier scenario, but... Um, I like it. I'm not a huge dungeon crawl fan, but the team I was playing with, the group I was playing with, there's like they are re like they're really into them, and that kind of enthusiasm and energy really helps kind of make it more fun. Mm, that's what was missing from my game, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been playing a game. You'll see it back. Uh, let me see if I can pull up this image for you here. There it is. Whoa. -ho -ho. Roll for the galaxy. And it has dice. 
It has dice, dice, excellent <laughs> dice, and lots of dice. I mean, it's got all kinds of dice. I suppose I can flip that off, huh? There you go. In fact, you can see it back there up on the... Uh, oh, I can't... Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. I see okay. the physiotherapy is working well with you. Uh, oh, thank you. Oh, it's, it's, I, I need, need some of that Pepto-Bismol stuff. For, no, I need that stuff for tired blood. What do they call it? Geritol. Um. <laughs> hmm. uh, well, anyway... Uh, Roll for the galaxy. Basically, what you're doing is you're getting all these different dice. You get to roll them, and you get to assign them to different uh, abilities. You can ship goods, or you can make goods, or you can go exploring and get these little tiles. And if you get these tiles, you get your home world. And uh, first one to get 12 tiles. This is when the game ends. And you're trying to trying to strategically organize this. Uh, I've played it about four or five times with a different number of people from two player all the way up to five players and uh, the more players you have there's kind of a little bit different strategy because of uh, the ability to go and you're kind of betting on what other people are going to do and so if there, someone's going to ship or someone's going to produce you know you can put your guy on ship and and then put another guy on produce and hope that someone else made that their main action and if they do you get to take that action as well so that's kind of interesting and basically that's uh, just in a real quick nutshell what role for the galaxy is what do you think I have to say about that one Barry ooh um, it's got the space theme you're big on space because um, Star Wars and um, it's got dice rolling. I think there's a lot of options in the game. I've played the game myself. Um, I would think that you think it was good because it's quite good production. It plays pretty quickly, um, lots of choices, and I think it's just a, a, a game that goes down well with your family. Suzanne. What do you think, Suzanne? Got to go with good. Maybe that's because I'm projecting my own opinion a little bit on you, but um, yeah, I can say everything you said and the dice, like, yeah, good. Uh, Ooh. Ooh. Not so bad. Um, what's, what's the problem, Doc? Yeah. Well, uh, I actually, I, I was strongly recommended by uh, Bebo to get this game, Brittany Bow. And she goes, you'll love this game. And so I said, okay, I'm going to get this game. Um, I played the regular card game, Race for the Galaxy. be honest with you, I just struggled with learning that game. And when it came to this game, the, the, the learning curve for me, I understand the mechanisms. I can play the game. But trying to figure out the strategies and the random draw of the different worlds and trying to get them to combo... And then for me to know when, when I need money and when I don't need money, um, it's like I just don't get the strategy. It makes me feel stupid when I play this game. <laughs> um, and I don't know. I, it, I, it's been that way every time I've played it, but I should love this game because I like, I like random. I like, I like dice, and I like the theme. Um, I think the game is well-produced, and people seem to just love it. But mm -hmm. I always come away from it just going, well... I'm glad I had some fun time with my friends, but this game just doesn't do anything for me. I'm so probably in the bad, minority there. Bad loser. That's what it is. Bad losing affecting your judgment of a game. That's terrible. Clearly. I thought you were better than that. I suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was that. You got another one, Barry? I have. I, I forgot. I've, I've got the pile of games here. But... <laughs> Ali, let's put the pictures up if I can find my control panel, and it should be here. I play this game. It's called Andor here in French, in French, French for France. There, um, not like in America where it's called Legends of Andor. Um, Andor, simple. It's like we have we have Catan here. Way before you had Catan over there. Catan. Yeah, Catan. it was cool. Yeah, it's got an E at the end, but. It, yeah, so Legend of Andor is another fantasy game. Yes, I like fantasy and monsters and building up a team and fighting darkness and all the team have got different abilities and they fight each other and say, you're a small guy for a dwarf, things like that. And um, it's it's a game, let's switch that off, 
and load up what I think about it while I'm talking at the same time because it's four o'clock in the morning and I can't oh. do two things at once. I like that little guy with the sword. That, that guy's cool. Yeah. Um, and um, it's a co-op game, so there's no baddie in this one, unlike Descent. Um, and this game plays like a computer game. Okay, you know when you're playing a computer game for the first time, you put it in, and then it says, okay, your character is this character. Push the joystick left to move him left. And push him right to move right. And you go, woohoo! And this game is the same. You set it up, as the rules say, and you just follow these cards. And at the beginning of the game, your request is just to move around. And once you've done that, these monsters start appearing, and then the game tells you how to fight them. And then at the end of that, it tells you that you can do this, that, and that. And the game builds up as you progress, and you get all these different quests going on. Sometimes there's like two quests or three quests going on at the same time. And um, it's total co-op. You're all working together, um, trying to sort out this kind of puzzle and get to the, the, the good scenario, because there's a, a good ending and a bad ending, because you can either win or you lose. And it's all story and characters and lots of text and... And um, it's just a, a wild adventure. Now. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. What do you think about that, Suzanne? Hmm. I'm going to go with not so bad. I don't know. I played it? I haven't played it. I've, I've actually listened to a number of reviews of it, and I'm interested in it. But there's something about the way Barry was talking about how the game tells you what to do. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm going with not so bad. Yeah, I was feeling that too. I think he was trying to throw you off because um, <sighs> that little ambiguous... No fair tricking that, the new girl. It's that thing that's on his headphone, that little butterfly clip thingy that he's... It's, <laughs> it's very beautiful. And it, See, look at him. He's so happy. And I think you love this game. You love it because it's so good. <laughs> See, it's you got me. Yeah, I got you. Um, it is a great game. Again, this one's my version is in French, and so again, there's a lot of text to read and digest. Um, it's a great game to play on your own. I love playing this on my own because it is a puzzle, and you got to go okay, mm -hmm. there, 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 there. Um, unlike pan pandemic, pan shmemic, pardon. Um, it's it, it's got more theme. Pan Shmemic is total random. This is not total random. It's kind of set each time. So the only downer is that once you know roughly how to beat a scenario, you can kind of do the same things to beat it again. Um, but um, we recently played this together. I played it with my wife, and she was very happy to have gotten past the introductory level because we've played it several times before and never got past the introductory <laughs> level. So. Woohoo! This game is nice. Yes, it's cardboard miniatures, but hey, it works for the game. Uh, there's good mechanics. Um, hopefully this kind of type of game will take off in the future, the, because as an integral storytelling, um, it, it's, it's just a little bit better than Descent at the moment for me. Wow. That's insane, something that is. That's awesome. That's We've been playing a little filler game that we just picked up. This was highly recommended by Z Garcia from the Dice Tower. Don't um, listen to what he says. Don't no, listen. Look at this, though, guys. Look at the. I don't know if you can see this. Look at this book. <laughs> you got to love that. And this game, basically what it's called, Biblios. It's by look Steve Finn. Look at this book. I like that piano. <laughs> so Biblios, uh, basically what's happening uh, is you've got five dice that represent different sets. And these dice, it's not that you're rolling them. It's not that they are random. They represent points that you can get. And you basically are, are, have a basic set collection type of mechanism, but you get to do one of a couple actions. You can draw a card, and you can look at it and keep it in your hand, or you can set it aside to auction later, or you can put it in the uh, discard pile where your opponent will be able to get it. And depending on how many you play with, there's different number of cards that are there. Uh, basically, after all, the deck is uh, has been expired. 
then you're going to go into the auction phase and you're going to use your cards there's gold cards there's some church cards that allow you to manipulate the dice up and down and if you win a certain set like say the brown dice and it's at level four that means you get four points uh, so it's pretty simple um, if you uh, you use gold cards to purchase these auction cards when you get to the auction phase if those auction uh, if a gold card comes up in the auction and you want to purchase that to purchase a later card, you can spend cards to purchase it. And so it's very reminiscent of a, a game uh, that uh, we've had in our collection for quite a while called For Sale. It's similar to that. Uh, and that's what do you think I have to say about that game, Suzanne and Barry? Suzanne. Uh, I'm going to go with good. Again, projecting a little bit, but uh, going to go with good, especially with your for sale reference at the end there. <laughs> I hate yeah. for sale. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> um, I know that the game is not a bad game. I haven't played it, but it's been one that I've heard a lot about, and every time I go into the game shop and I see it on the shelf, and I think, well, no one's bought it. wonder why. But um, I think with... The, the the intelligence that I have, which is very small at the moment, that the game is a good, solid game, and the theme, uh, I think, will interest you because... No, well, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> but I think, very, I, think, I think you say it's good. It's very scholarly. No, it's really a set collection, but you guys are absolutely right. I finally got one! Yay! Love this game. Um, it's just a fantastic game. It's so fun. I love the box. Uh, Yellow did a great job with this reprint of it. Uh, the components, I mean, are you know they're just cards and that kind of thing. But the way this game plays, this uh, a couple of the small filler games that we like to play in our home, and if we have guests or uh, bringing out a gateway filler short little thing, we like to play Roll for it. We like to play Las Vegas. We like to play No Thanks and For Sale. This game is now our number one go-to in that situation. Just love it. It's always fun. It's always different. Uh, you're always you got that little push your luck. Oh, do I put it in the auction? Oh, I got to keep this gold. But oh, then I might give my opponent a card, and it's always got that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I so. I, I own it, and and Barry, they're not buying it because everybody owns it because it's so great. I don't. There you go. Well, you got to get in with the in-crowd. Come on, man. If I got in with the in-crowd, I'd have an iPad and I'd have an iPhone. Oh, I've got an iPhone. Uh... <laughs> what? We're going to do a fundraiser uh, pretty soon so we can get Barry an iPad. <laughs> then he can do apps by Suzanne, see? Yeah, uh, I'll make... tell you, Barry gave me a hard time in video about smartphones and his lack thereof. So it's a bit of a shock to see him brandishing a fancy, fancy smartphone around right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a cheap 50 euro one. It's not... If I flush this one down the toilet, it, it, I can replace it quite easily. <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> well, we're going to finish up uh, this segment now with our good, bad, and ugly, and we're going to just go right into a little bit of a recap from the last show where we talk about Dice Tower Con, and then we're going to go into our game show with Suzanne. But Suzanne, you happen to be at Dice Tower Con, and uh, it was my first time at Dice Tower Con. I got to bring my daughter Gabrielle for a graduation present, and uh, that was the first time I got to meet you in person. And uh, we just had such a blast at Dice Tower Con. What did you... Uh, what did you guys think about it? Well, I need to get over my hurt feelings um, first because, in point of fact, i that's the second time we've spent time in person together. Dun, dun, oh, no. dun. So, uh, good to know. Where? I am so memorable. Oh. Where's the first? You know, gosh darn. When did we meet before? I believe that we spent some time together at BGG Con last year. Oh, stupid! Yes, of course we did. No, no, no. Fantastic. That was me in disguise, darling. That was me in <laughs> disguise. Well, I didn't get to play. I didn't get to play any games with Suzanne. Then I did get to meet her. It's though. true. That's, That's true. Fair enough. But um, no, Dice Tower Con 
was a phenomenal experience for me. I I can't say enough about how much fun I had there, how great the people were, um, how many I I got to play a ton of games and um, just get to know a, a lot of great new friends. Um, I, I highly recommend it for anybody that's looking for a more low key event than say a Gen Con. Um, I I think the the pros to Dice Tower are the size is really manageable and uh, you, you see you start to see the same faces uh, you know after a few hours so it feels very familial everybody's super nice they all have you know board gamers don't inherently have a ton in common other than board game, but I mean board games are so broad but at least at the Dice Tower Con most people know what the Dice Tower is and they're they kind of have some kind of entertainment factor in common um, the, the game library for you know, it's a. It was fifteen hundred people, I think, this year. The game About library. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome for you know a mid-sized con. The game library was great. So easy. They had the whole beep 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 badge checkout thing for the the games. Um, I think the the one big drawback to it is the location. Um, you know, I I flew from Seattle to Florida to do it, but I mean, it is you know being coastal. Well, come on, France. Um, being coastal, you know, you I think a lot of people have to make a choice, and I don't think a lot of you didn't see a ton of West Coasters there, right? Whereas you go to like a BGG Con or an Origins, it's a little more mid range. Um, it's a little easier to get to. I mean, I think if Dice Tower Con were more centrally located, um, it would, you know, be crazy huge in a matter of seconds. Although well, it's probably it, it was crazy huge anyway. And it was right, you know, at the end of June, which, I mean, it was hot, and it was humid there, and uh, it was beautiful, tropical, so, I mean, you got to love it. I'm from Minnesota, and so I, I can handle the heat. I'd rather have the heat than the snow any day, but, uh, you know, I'm sure for, for you, Suzanne, too, that was a little bit of a shock coming down to that temperature. Yeah, I mean, I think the location is probably the hindrance if the weather... For a Seattleite, I mean, bless you, Florida, but I don't, like, going outside, it was like breathing through a swamp water-soaked sponge. It was just, I'm not used to that, and I found it really unpleasant. Uh, thankfully, it's a board gaming convention, so I'm not expected to be outside, so I could just hold up inside in the nice air-conditioned sanctuary and, and be okay that way, and, and that was... I mean, that was we're kind of we're kind of nitpicking a little bit, but you know, if if they did this in the winter time in March or something like that, yeah. it would be perfect yeah. for us Northerners uh, to go down there. But one thing that was so awesome is the buildings were fairly closely located. There was places you could go. Uh, the Dice Tower puts on all these shows. You know, they had these mm -hmm. these they had the Dice Tower live show uh, where they did a top ten, and then they had the Dice Tower award show. Uh, they had the game show a couple nights. Uh, my daughter just had a blast at at Dice Tower Con, and uh, my my family has been gaming, but Gabby's kind of uh, Gabrielle is her name. We we call her Gabby, but she she likes games, but she doesn't like super in depth games. But she just turned into a gaming maniac. Yeah. I mean, she now get this. This is crazy. I mean, she was up almost every night till two o'clock. Some one night till three o'clock playing Werewolf, and that one night Suzanne we played with you, two rooms and a boom. Yep. I mean, she couldn't get enough of it. She just loved it. We've played Mafia and stuff, and she's done that with friends. But she just was on it. And you know how many games she played? Fourteen total games, not including those social games. And you know how many games of the fourteen she, she won? She won ten of them. <laughs> now my Good job, my Dad. daughter. <laughs> my daughter Gabrielle is she's very sweet spirit and very very kind and she has this uh, very sweet neat personality on the outside. I'm gonna tell you this story. This is awesome. Barry's Barry's not getting in on this conversation much, but we'll come back to you, buddy. We're coming back, yeah. So see, we're sitting down playing a game with Scott Morris from Arcane Wonders, better known as Talks from Crits Happen. Okay, love Scott. Uh, he is teaching us the game Royals, and we're having a blast playing Royals. Really, I love Peter Hawes, and so I knew I was going to like this game because uh, I love Francis Drake, Triassic Terror. So we're playing the new Dice Tower Essential game, Royals. Gabby is there, and Gabby has the Monarch, 
and Scott says to Gabby, I think I'm going to take that monarch over there in Germany, I think it was. And Gabby looks at him and goes, oh, don't do that. Don't you know that today is my birthday? <laughs> and Scott, he goes, oh, really? It's your birthday. Oh, well, happy birthday. <laughs> and I'm sitting back going, <laughs> and and then and then she started laughing and then Scott goes it's not your birthday. <laughs> wow. So she put on the charm and uh, I don't remember if she won that game or not, but it was pretty fun. It's my birthday. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Let me win. I should try that. Yeah. We played so many fun games at Dice Tower Con. I got to play with uh, Sean and uh, from Dukes of Dice. Yeah, and, Sean and Alex. And Alex and Max. I got to play Baseball Highlights, which is one of my favorite games, uh, with Max uh, on the last day, too. and Just a blast. We played a, a epic game of Kemet and uh, Orleone. Mm -hmm. Just had a blast. and that I don't know. I, games. We had one, one more, more quick thing, and we'll, we'll close this segment, but highlight moment for me, and you probably have some, too, Suzanne. Uh, we're walking down, Gabby and I are by the restaurant, and here comes strolling by Richard Borg and Mike Fitzgerald. Now, I think Mike Fitzgerald is, is a board game genius, you know, I just, I know he plays mostly card games and, and designs card games, but Richard Borg, um, my son Josiah and I have played Memoir 44 for years, uh, uh, one of his favorite games, and we had to meet Richard at Gen Con three years ago, and got to take a picture with him, but they're there, they're talking, we take a couple pictures, and he remembered me actually, which was kind of interesting, and we talked. Uh, last year at Gen Con, we were waiting to get into the vendor hall, and here I end up standing next to Mike Fitzgerald, and I talked to him about for 15 minutes about his new game at that time, Diamonds. So, nice, just nice man. Um, I, I just really appreciate these people are real people, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they're 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 accomplished people, but they're they're just real. And uh, then we go into the restaurant. They're sitting down, and who walks in but Eric Lang? And he sits down with them and has lunch. Now I don't know Eric. I've never met him. I appreciate his work. But uh, Gabby and I are sitting at another table, and Richard comes over and says, "Why don't you guys come over and join us for dinner?" And so we got to sit and have dinner with Mike Fitzgerald, Richard Borg, and Eric Lang. And Eric, you know, he's these guys are brilliant. You know, it's crazy how they talk, and you're listening in on the whole deal. And and Richard Borg was kidding with Gabby and having fun. He was like a grandpa. You know, just it was just a lot of fun and uh, made some really great memories for us. That's awesome. Well, you know, just to wrap up, if I can tell one quick story, since you mentioned yes. Eric Lang. Um, I bumped into Eric Lang in the little coffee shop that you know the hotel had, getting a latte in the morning, and and he's kind of patting his you know his shirt and stuff like that. And I was like, do you do you have a pen? And I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't. And he, what? A woman I, without a pen? <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> um, and he he pulls out of his bag a starter set of the new Dice Masters. Right, and he says, "Oh, okay. I'm look. I need a pen to sign this." And um, long story long, he had found out through the grapevine that somebody he had met, their son, who looked like he was eight or nine, their their eight or nine year old son was a huge Dice Masters fan, just loved the game, right? And so Eric has basically a pre release copy of the latest. Uh, um, Dice Master set on him, and he wanted to sign it so he could find this kid and give it to him, and and we got him a pen, and you know the the person behind the counter had a sharpie of course, and so we got him a pen. He signed it to the kid's name, and we just literally happened to pass the family as we're walking out, and Eric pauses and you know taps the kid on his shoulder and says, you know I just want to give this. The look on this boy's face was his jaw dropped, and he. He, he shook a little, like he was shaking, and he didn't even know what to say. He was so excited, and, you know, of course, they said thank you and whatever, and Eric's just, of course, no, it's, it's for you. Enjoy. I'm, so, you know, so glad you like the game, and, you know, that was it, but, I mean, 
so generous and thoughtful. I mean, that was so thoughtful of him. Um, super nice guy, and I, I think that that experience just um, it's very emblematic to me of what the board game community is like. They're very giving, very generous, and very thoughtful, which is kind of awesome. Yeah, I totally agree. Like he was talking, they were talking at the table and had had a story that was similar to that too. And uh, when they had the designer panel, I don't know if you did. You listen in on that when it all the designers. Kind of no, I didn't uh, go. Oh, that was really cool. But they talked about, you know, what their design, why they do what they do, and you could feel that from them. You could tell it wasn't. This wasn't just a job. This wasn't trying to be somebody. This was. I love this, and I want to bring joy into people's heart. You know, and just like that example that you say, that's what really matters to them. And of course, we all need to make a living and all that stuff. But there's more behind them. I was really impressed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question, Suzanne? Earlier, you mentioned uh, when we talked about Rodney, you were talking about the Lords of Canada. Now, I was just wondering: uh, Are you referring to Eric Lang, or are you exactly. referring to are you referring to Terence and Philip? <laughs> I'm a, I'm such a longtime South Park fan. I'm so glad you uttered the names of Terence and Philip. Of course, um, I don't know those those Canadians. I'm I I there there's something in the water up there because they're a pretty impressive set so and you know I live in Seattle Washington so they're just over the border I I don't know I might have to might have to think about them dating mm -hmm. don't don't tell them don't tell them <laughs> well I think it's a good time to go to our our game show and the title of this is what game is behind the door and what we're gonna do is we've got three sections of this uh, portion of our show where we are going to get Suzanne to join in with us. And the first thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to go into the first question is what is the last game that you have purchased? Now, Suzanne, what we're going to do, Barry and I each get five questions. And okay. after each question we ask you, we get to uh, make a guess, and uh, you're going to try to stump us. Okay. So, so I can uh, Barry, just lie. <laughs> uh, you're, you you got to be truthful, and uh, no ambiguity here. Okay, yeah, that it's, was a it's, big word. It's, it's yeah, it's twenty questions, but knocked down to five questions each. So yes or no answers, nothing in between. Um, no, no phone of friends. Because <laughs> there's no friends here. <laughs> We're your enemies. Okay, you go ahead, Barry. Go for it. Uh, oh, uh, so what was the last game you purchased? Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned Snake earlier that you, you think that we're not going to possibly get this one. So I am going to say that's probably something old. So I'm going to say, e um, um, does this game have a boring theme? No. Okay. Mm. Uh, I, I'm not going to guess anything. No guesses, huh? Uh, was it uh, produced uh, in 2015? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay. 2015. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll hold off as well. Go ahead, Barry. Okay. Is this a party style game? No. Ooh, good question. No, it wasn't. It didn't give me the right answer that I wanted. <laughs> Okay. Oh, does this game have a space theme to it? No. Ah. <laughs> Is this game comprised mostly of cards? No. Oh. Yeah, no. No, okay. Hmm. <laughs> oh, this for those fun. of you that are watching online, <laughs> yeah. please leave a comment. Yes, <laughs> yes. That was just stalling for time. Oh. Oh, uh, wow. Wow. Does this game come in a small box? No. No. Hmm. Okay, so it's a big game. It's not primarily cards. It's not space. It's not party. Two hundred five. 
Oh, la, 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 la. That's a tough one. Oh, jeez. I've run out of questions for some reason. Let's look at what games have come out in 2015. I'm so behind the times here. Ah, I, I am cold to the new, so. Uh, yeah, 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 and I'm cold. Oh, she, this is awesome. She gives us hints. <laughs> oh, that was a hint. Okay, maybe I should, maybe I should do. Oh, Suzanne. <laughs> oh, God, no, no. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. This is. Right. Oh, I'm losing you guys. I'm losing you. It's game staticky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Barry, give her a question. Come on, um, you can do it. Um, 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 uh, was the game designed by Eric Lang? <laughs> oh. This is your game. Shouldn't you be better at it? <laughs> yeah. No, it was not designed by Eric Lang. Mary, that was not helpful. Mary, we're trying to win this game. Yeah, but I'm so okay. I feel like I should throw you a bone. It wasn't designed by a Canadian at all. <laughs> no Canadians. Okay. Yeah, I gave you that a narrows it down. That narrows it down to um, Frederick Henry, uh, <laughs> Bowser, Bruce Did Thana. this game, was this game nominated or did it win... A Dice Tower Award. No. Mm. Um, do you want a, a do-over? Because you already asked if it was made in 2015. Yeah. So it can't yeah. qualify for a Dice Tower Award yet. True. It's 2000. Oh, that's true. So did it win a 2014 Dice Tower nomination or award? No. <laughs> Well, that's a stupid question, too, because that's the same thing. <laughs> I'm really stupid. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> stupid, stupid, stupid. I'll nope. follow that up with another stupid question. Was it produced by Parker Brothers? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. um, no. Um, no, that's not a real question, because Parker Brothers are not in business anymore, are they? No. I don't, I don't think so. Precisely, that's why it was a stupid question. Okay, I'm going to take a wild stab and say... Um, a peanut butter jelly. That was wild. Um, <laughs> Jesus. It's very <laughs> early for you, Barry. Yeah, I can't think of any games that come out in 2015. Um... <sighs> I'm looking at Board Game Geek as well, and it's like... You can, <laughs> they literally put a list. You can literally click on the year. Yeah, I know. I'm looking, and I'm going, okay. Um, 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 I'm going to say Blood Rage. No, no, it can't be Blood Rage. That's Eric Lang. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. I don't care who you are. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> wow. Like the one. <laughs> I'm rooting for you, Barry. You could win it for us here. Come on, do something brilliant. I can't. I can't. I need a coffee. Vodka. Do you need a hint? No, go on, Kevin. Go on. I I, I quit. I quit. Okay. Was, well, my brain here. Not functioning. We, I'll, I'll do my question. Think of another question. Um. Does this is the main mechanism of this game worker placement? No. Mm. I just doubled. I was just mentally playing through the game, making sure I wasn't misleading you. But no. No. Okay. Um, I'm gonna have another stab. Um, dexterity game. No. Okay. Not a dexterity game. <laughs> Well, that's our five questions each. Yeah, I'm going to say Lagrange. Ooh, that's a good guess, and closer than I thought you were going to get, actually, but no. Ah, right, okay, that's it. Okay, so it's closer. So possibly it might be closer in proximity of producer. So <laughs> I'm going to say you got a copy of Dark Moon from Stronghold Games. No, that's space theme, isn't it? Yeah, I was just going to say. <laughs> You know, I, I write it all down, and I, uh, I still can't remember what I asked. I don't need to write it down to forget it. <laughs> so we we failed miserably. So it's one point to we Suzanne. Failed. 
Yay! Go ahead and let us let us know. Yeah. My <laughs> my most recent game purchase was Kraftwagen. Kraftwagen. Kraftwagen oh, by Matthias Kramer. Really. I yes. don't even know what she's talking about. Do you have a picture of it? Where I don't it? have a picture of it. I wasn't expecting to need a picture of it. Uh, Sorry. We, need a, we don't know what this is. We need a picture. Can you, you draw You don't it? know? Can have you heard of the game um, Lancaster or Glenmore? Oh, yeah, yeah. Or Helvetia? <laughs> or oh. Rococo? Yeah, I love Rococo. Yeah, he's he's the he's the designer of all those games, and Craft Wagon is his brand new game. Uh, the theme is uh, your your. I, I guess it would take place in like the twenties ish, or maybe a little earlier, and you're manufacturing cars. Um, and oh, I have heard about this one. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, you're competing. The main mechanism is really this kind of Kramer. Uh, action selection thing where actions are represented on tokens and you take the token and then you get to take that action and then that token goes to the back of the line and okay. you know depending on how many you can pick any of the actions but it's kind of like once you you know jump ahead in the line that gives people behind you more opportunities to take more actions um, and then over here there's like you you're building these cars and then you have to choose whether you're going to sell the cars or whether you're going to race the cars yeah and Barry has a picture of it up yeah. it's um <laughs> it got really big um all right sorry it's a mm. wonderful game and so much fun uh intricate but not fiddly uh you you definitely it's not heavy like i wouldn't call it a heavyweight uh, but it's a very enjoyable Euro game, action selection, and um, I highly recommend it. It's such a great game. Wow, similarly themed to Kanban, not quite as quite as in depth, or uh, yeah, definitely much much lighter than Kanban. Um, and I really like the era. I mean, you know, the theme is is what it is, but um, I love that it's set kind of in the earlier days of car manufacturing, and all the art kind of reflects that and things like it's it's. It's tremendous fun. So if you like medium weight euros, I think Craft Wagon is worth a look. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, the next uh, part two. Do you want to explain that, Barry? Yeah, part two is um, where our guest has to draw. So yeah, if you're watching, if you're watching this live on YouTube, then cool. Or if you're watching this on YouTube later, it's cool. But if you're listening to the podcast, there is a video version of this podcast. Uh, that you can check out, Berkey and Badger. And our guests will be drawing and describing um, what game are they most excited about getting. Um, so they have about 30 seconds to do a doodle and then hold it up in front of the camera for us. And um, we will try to... Yeah, I can see test. Wonderful. Okay. Wow, One, two, And um, we shall give you your 30 seconds when you are ready, mademoiselle. All right. I, okay. Really? I'm go. ready. Go, go, go. go. Okay. You may go. Draw. Okay. Draw like the wind. Oh, wait. There's noises? You guys are, like, bugging me? That's, that's terrible. That's very stressful. Oh, shush. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, wait. Now you're stressing me out, actually. Doesn't she have a left hemisphere or right hemisphere where she can do all these things? Mmm. But she hasn't got a pen in her bag. She's a woman that doesn't carry a pen around with her. That, there's yes, I knew. Yes, I knew that. <laughs> and from the you, you pulled the wrong tooth. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are stressing me out. <laughs> you, <laughs> you are Cluzo. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled the wrong tooth. Kill him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Am I out of time yet or is it stuff time? No, um, we're screwing around. We got all kinds of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's watching. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they nice will. Content. They will. They will come back. And I'm close. gonna have a look. See if there's any comments. Right, if let's draw. They will come. They draw. Okay. There you oh go. There's God. Susanna's drawing. She's drawn some circles. At big three big circles with some small circles in it with crowns on it. Oh, um, there's crowns. 
There looks to be some puzzle pieces up in the top left and some shields down the left. Oh, there's okay. shields down there, but there's a big, big circles and little circles that represent must represent countries. Mm -hmm. The towns on the countries. It could be countries. Oh, I know what this is. Go She's on, excited. I know. I know what it is. Barry, I'm gonna be be nice and let you let you guess first. I know I what it, it is. I think it might be the um. I don't know why, but I'm thinking Mad Cleef King Ludwig's expansion. Oh, it's not King Ludwig. No. It's not, but I'm very excited about that one as well, so it's not a bad guess. Okay. I'm excited about that one, too. Um, it's Royals. Yay! Kevin got it. Yay! Uh, wait, wait, wait. Well, I just got the title. So. I'm the winner. I'm the winner. Okay. That's one point for us, then. Yeah, one point for us, one point for her. So the grand finale goes to part three. The question to the guest is, what is your favorite game? And we, we know that this is a hard one, so it's what is your current favorite game, the game that you're playing the most at the moment? Yep, oh, yep, the yep. most at the moment. Okay. Yeah, because it's okay. very, very, very hard to pick a favorite game. I, I could say Hero Quest, but yeah, I don't play it, so it's not. <laughs> you know. I know what my favorite game is. It's uh -huh. not business, you know what I'm saying? It's nothing personal. When uh, did I ever refuse accommodation? Is it Firefly? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we better give her... This is the way this has worked. The guest, Suzanne, is going to give us five one-word clues. Now, these clues cannot be in the title of the game, these one-word clues, and you cannot use the designer's name. Uh, and then we're going to guess them as you give them. If uh, we can't guess it after five clues, then you get to give us a phrase as a clue. And do um, am I trying to stump you, or do I want you to guess it? Uh, you're trying to stump us. Mm. But you will fail. You will fail. <laughs> Valiantly, you will fail. Okay. <laughs> We know. <laughs> okay, Barry has an excuse. What's your excuse, Kevin? <laughs> All right, five clues. Number one, cards. Dominion. Cards. Cards. Oh, Dominion Adventures. Is that what you're saying, Barry? I'm saying Dominion. Okay, is that right? Suzanne, is that right? No. That's not right? Um, cards. Hmm. If your next clue is playing pieces, I'm going <laughs> to strangle you. And then the third clue, dice. <laughs> um, Box. I'm going to say... Um, uh, wow. I'm drawing a blank. I'm going to pass. All right. Second clue, mm -hmm. orthogonal. So, how would you spell that? Orthogonal. 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 Okay. Orthogonal? That, that means like they go kind of kitty womp of some of these other... Battleship. No, it's not cards in Battleship. <laughs> Battle? You really think I would pick Battleship oh. as my favorite game, Barry? Ouch. No. Ba Ouch, Battle man. Could it, could it be Splendor? Ooh. Splendor? No. Ooh. Where's the Uthagano in Splendor? Well, they're they're over there. The cards, the cards are Uthagano laid out. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the thing. <laughs> oh, that's that. <laughs> I'm shutting up. Shutting up. Yes, Barry, get it, get it. Um, 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 Caverna. No. No. Cards and orthogonal. No more big words, okay? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Two biggest words. Oh, no, now you distracted me, and I forgot my next word. Um... Uh, oh no! Oh no! Oh no! 
I'll have to I'll have to switch up my plan. Um, I know. See, and now you guys got me stumped, and that's not fair. I'm supposed to be like. I'm supposed to be we like win. the guest. We win. Yeah. We're the guest. Right. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't. Not even close. Um, tableau. Tableau. Yeah, the tableau. Oh, I know what this game is. I know, I know, I know. Barry, do you know? I know, I know. You know. Uh, that's yes, great, you know, I, because I do not know. A tableau. What's a, what, what, what the fudge is a tableau? It's French. It's a table in French. Come on, man. No, that's a table. <laughs> oh, a table. A table. You ask the Canadians, it's a table. Um, tableau. Oh, uh, is, is it... Oh, what's that game? Uh, um, no. Blank. Oh, no, we got it. No. Elysium. No. I haven't played Elysium yet. I really want to. Oh, thought I had it. Aww. Okay. So another one. We're gonna Next word. It. it ain't over until it's over, baby. That's right. Nature. Nature. I can spell that. Is that, yeah, is that a small enough word for you? <laughs> nature. It's nature. Ooh. Game that you've been playing recently, Nature. I think uh, e Evo, no. That's called dinosaurs. Now that was a throw off clue, that's what that was. Yeah. Cards are thinking all these. I'm gonna say Bugs, bugs. Uh yeah, what's that? Um hive. Ooh. Do you did you write down my other clues, Barry? Cards. <laughs> Cards and nature. Cards against nature. Cards, uh, cards against nature. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the vodka man. The vodka yeah. effect. Well, 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 we need a new clue from you. Will you give us a new clue? All right. My last clue for you is Z-Man. Ah, uh, we didn't say publisher, so Z-Man. Oh, okay, yeah. nature or cardinal. Let's see if anyone's guessed it on YouTube. Oh, you've got some. Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, Wait, you can go. You're, I thought there was no phone a friend. And uh, there's no phone a friend for you. <laughs> yeah, we can we can phone any friends we want. Friends, get on Twitter. Help us, please. Okay. Oh no, sorry. Uh, no, it's not amongst the stars. Cardinal nature. Z man, Z man, Z man. Man, Z-Man's doing some awesome is stuff lately. Is there a time lately. limit? I mean, because... There's I, no time limit. We can go as long as we want. Okay. I'm going to say Marco Polo. No. No. Nah, there's no... There's camels. That's nature. Yeah. Absolutely. Camels are nature. <laughs> Palm trees are nature. They're in there. We should never said spitting. We should said spitting. That would have been a good clue. Dang. No. The only Z-Man game I can think of at the moment is Apocalypse Chaos. That's not even out yet. Okay, so do you want... So I win. Yeah, you win. No, 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 no. No, no, we get a phrase. Oh, you get a phrase. Phrase as a hint. A phrase as a hint. All right. Um... See, she thought she had us. Yeah, that's I did. Where we, that's where we get them. <laughs> um... Go write it down. I know what it is. Go on, mm, phrase. Okay, my favorite Shel Silverstein book is *The Giving Tree*. I, you, it's not showing. Yeah. <laughs> the giving tree. Am I right? Yeah. No, Barry, you're. You, Let me see. You're so wrong in so many ways. <laughs> You did that so it wouldn't be on the audio podcast, didn't you? Yes. I said pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, favorite one she's playing now. The Giving Tree. Never heard of The Giving Tree. Oh, does anyone, anyone on YouTube know what it is? Arbit 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 
Well, I'm just going to say Bruges. I've got a response from YouTube. Oh. Ma Mariano, he says, Arboritum. Ar Arboritum. Good job. Ah! Way to go! Well I'm done. so glad she helped us. Because she helped us from the other world in the technology thing, um, that means we win. <laughs> no, that means our, our viewers win. The viewers, viewers win. She is very smart. Wow. Yep. I've been playing a ton of Arboretum lately and um, quite enjoy it. Yes. Is it my favorite all-time game? I don't know. But the way you define favorite was what are you playing a lot of and really enjoying a lot right now, and Arboretum is definitely it. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, that was a lot of fun. I hope everybody enjoyed that. I know we take our time uh, trying to figure it all out, but that's kind of the fun of it. And uh, thanks for uh, uh, putting up with us with all that, Susan. <laughs> of course. It was fun for me, too. I just, like, I couldn't say tree. Like, to me, I couldn't say tree or foliage or, like, I felt like... Too you obvious. Know, I, yeah. Yeah, that's great. And I well, don't feel like get... I cheated you. <laughs> no, you did very good. That was uh, very sharp. And... Uh, so far, you you are the sharpest uh, at that Pencil question. Game. Game. Yeah. yeah. Robert had us going though too. We we did come out come out on top at the end, but it was yeah. he oh, had us tough. going. I got to tell you. Okay, so we're gonna get right on to the babble. That's mm -hmm. our segment in the show where we talk about a topic. And uh, today it's kind of a dual topic. We're gonna talk a little bit about Gen Con and some of the things we're excited about. Gen Con, uh, but then we're also going to allow Suzanne to talk a little bit about Gen Can't, and I'll let her explain that a little bit more. And it's the babble! It's where we talk about whatever we want to talk about. Yeah, we're going to talk about something. How does this, how does this work, Suzanne? <laughs> I'm good. still be bopping to the music. You still be bopping. Oh, I'll turn it up again. I'm wait. trying to. I'm trying to figure out how this thing works. Yeah. You know? Doing the music's the easy bit, but getting it to play is the hard bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, we'll talk about uh, Gen Con. You know, uh, this will be my third year at Gen Con. Uh, I have a really kind of neat little story about Gen Con. The first year that we went, we took my son Josiah for his graduation. His best friend Trevor and his dad, who is a close friend of mine, we all went to Gen Con, and we were in the games library. And Gen Con can be a little bit overwhelming if it's your first time convention. It's huge, a lot going on. Uh, we enjoyed it. We we just had a blast anyway. But we were in the we were playing the game Nothing Personal, and it was when it just came out. Well, what happened is, as we were playing it, all of a sudden this big guy comes over with this great big red shirt, and he says, have you whacked anybody yet? <laughs> and my son uh, looked up at him, and my son's friend Trevor looked at him, and I looked up at him, and I saw his name badge, and it said Tom. Uh, uh, I really didn't know who Tom Vassell was at that time. Uh, but my son's, yeah, I know, shoot me. So... My son and his friend, they, they adore Tom Vassal. They were always watching all these videos, and, and uh, they couldn't talk. They'd like, <laughs> Tom Vassal, <laughs> Tom Vassal. And I'm saying, yeah, 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 we're liking this, and so we're having fun. Well, the next night, we go back into the game room, and here it's about 1030, and here Tom Vassal's standing there, and he sees us, and he says, did you enjoy the game? And I said, yeah, we really had a great time. And, he goes, what are you guys doing? He said, Not, we're looking for a game. He goes, well, you want to play a game? Well, yeah. And we got to play El Grande with Tom Vassal. And uh, it was just a memorable moment for us. And one of, our, one of our favorite moments at Gen Con, and Josiah was just thrilled about the whole thing. We had a lot of good times. But uh, last year we went to Gen Con, had a blast uh, seeing, and started to get to know some of the people in the industry and those kind of things. And... Uh, so that's kind of been my experience, and we're super excited about going again. I've got a few favorite games I'm thinking about. Have you been to Gen Con before, Suzanne? Nope. You haven't been there. Lost you. She's muted. Oh, sorry. There you are. Okay. Okay. I've not been to Gen Con ever yet. Ever. Are you wanting to go? Honestly, it's not the top 
con that I want to add to my docket for a year? I would add Origins before I would add Gen Con. Mm. Well, the thing about Gen Con, if you've never been to a, a major convention before, you know, I went to BGG Con, about 2,500 people. Dice Tower Con was a little over 1,000. Uh, as I understand it, Origins this last year was like 16,000, which was up quite a bit from the prior year. Gen Con last year had 57,000, you know, and they, over yeah. the four days it was like 197 turnstile attendees. Uh, last year, if you had a backpack on, sometimes it was kind of hard to get through the aisles. <laughs> and sure enough, someone was walking around with a wagon or pushing some kids in a stroller, and, and, and it blocked the whole line, you know, so you're trying to get around people. And But it's a show, man. I mean, what what was crazy is we got, we got last year we got to meet uh, Rob Rouse and Patrick Kelly from Blue Peg, Pink Peg. And my son and I, we took them out to Fogo de Cao's Brazilian Steakhouse. Now, I don't know if you ever heard about Fojo's before, but Fojo's, it's, they, just, they just bring you meat. You turn your dial over to green, and, and as long as you got it on green, they just bring you over these skewers of meat. These, these gauchos come out there, these chefs, and they just slice off the meat. And you just, you know, your, your hollow leg, you just fill that hollow leg full of meat. You know, you just keep cramming it. And then you turn it over to red so you can get it in there. And then you turn it back over. Then you head over to the vomitorium for a little while. You come back and turn it back to green. So... <laughs> It's Your just eyes like a, are so <laughs> wide telling this story. Like you're so excited about this meat fest. It's crazy. I love meat. Okay, it's just the way it is. But you so have to I be careful before. because afterwards you're gonna have trouble getting through the the, the crowds at Gen Con because you'll be with your backpack and you know an extra. Well, we fill the backpack full of meat too, so we can have it later. <laughs> you know. No, no, but it uh, we we didn't we noticed after the first two days there's so much going on going through the vendor hall you're looking at all these games you're demoing games but there's so many toys everywhere there's toys there's toys everywhere there's it, it's Chessex is there and they've got this huge booth with all these dice and it it's just from one booth you can't get through the whole place uh, it's crazy. And by the second day, we realized we had hardly played any games. After being two days at a convention, and we caught up with Patrick and Rob and said, what are you guys doing? Uh, well, we've been demoing for Stronghold. They were doing Veloopspa, Veloopspa, you know. You've never played a game of Veloopspa. you got to play it with Rob Rouse. Veloopspa! It's awesome. But we did that, and... Uh, one of the things that, uh, or when I, when we caught them in the hall, we said we got to play some games. We're not playing any games, and we sat down at till three in the morning and played the game Shogun, mm -hmm. uh, the Queen game Shogun with the dice tower, and uh, what a blast we had. And so that was last year's Gen Con, but it can be a be a little bit overwhelming because. There's such a spectacle. It's such a trade show. All the big publishers are there. It's fabulous. It's exciting. But it's not like sitting down at Dice Tower and just going to a table and just playing games and hanging out with people. Yeah, yeah. Chaz, Chaz, if you're watching, mate, there's some advice. <laughs> I hope you don't have an anxiety attack because I'm starting to have one just listening to this. <laughs> um, we never had that. I mean, we were... We never felt, you know, it's kind of the crowd. So if you don't like crowds, you know, stay away. But, but other than that, it was it was so much fun. We got to meet so many people, and you know, I still enjoyed it. And this year, we're going as a sheriff, and we're gonna. My daughter Maddie's gonna have her costume, so we're gonna ham it up and have some fun. The Dice Tower live show is there. Uh, that's gonna be really a blast. And a couple games that I'm looking forward to. One of them that I want to see is from Portal Games, uh, the Atlanteans expansion. Mm -hmm. Love Imperial Settlers, so I'm really excited to get in on that one. Um, there's a game that's been out, I think, Barry, I think you did a review on this, but 1901 New York. Yep, 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 that one. Blue Orange Games, is that right? <laughs> yep. Yes, it is Blue Orange, um, a, a kind of uh, Tetris, city building, kind of very light style feels like you're playing Ticket to Ride, but not playing Ticket to Ride. Ah, great game. Great game. Mm. There's another game uh, called Flick 'Em Up. 
that I'm really excited about uh, seeing. I've heard really good things about that. Blood Rage is another one that I really want to yeah. get my hands on. Mm -hmm. The Lords of Canada have spoken. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Kevin. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, do you have a uh, six nymphed? You have what? Do you have the game six nymphed? No. Well, just the way you were talking about kind of your gateway games and the games you introduce people to, um, I found out that Mayfair Games is going to have copies of Six Nymphed on sale there, which usually you can only get in like Germany or whatever. And I highly recommend you pick it up. It's a lightweight card game that um, uh, you're laying out cards in these lines, and you know you just have to play cards that in sequence. Like, you know, if you have the 36 out, you want to play a card as close to 36 as possible. But there's points on the cards, and points are bad, and you can do... It's a really great lightweight card game that has a little bit of depth to it that I can't get enough of. And so... Um, I'm sorry, I'm getting the echo of myself, and it's really weird. Um, I highly recommend that you pick a copy of that up. It shouldn't be that expensive. It's hard to get in the United States, and it's a great filler and gateway card game. Really? How did, how is that spelled? Six, the number six, and then N I M M T. M M T. Wow, that sounds. Barry, awesome. have you played that? Oh no 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 no! I, I remember it. I remember seeing a review of it, and I thought, yeah, that looks quite interesting. But, cool. Um, yeah. There's another game um, that uh, once we started board game theater, and we're we're doing these these shows in in costumes and in thematic character. Suzanne and Barry, you were both uh, uh, on our episode of our episode of my Wally. You're not hearing me. I hear you. How's that? Okay. <laughs> uh, our episode of Star Realms. You guys both contributed. That was awesome. Thank you for doing that. But we've got a guy that contacted us about his new game. His name is Kevin Cox, and he's got this game, cooperative game called Space Movers. Mm -hmm. And that's one I'm. I actually he the game to we haven't got to, but the production value of this game is amazing. It's got a comic book in it. And the storyline behind this game is like I'm really impressed. I don't know how it plays yet, so I don't have an opinion, but we're going to meet him there and actually get a chance to play the game with him. And if if the game is as good as the production value uh He's going to have something going on there, so that's kind of excited. Um, there's one other one that I'm really excited about getting, and this was something Gabby really wanted. I think you might have pointed this out to me, Suzanne, at Dice Tower Con, uh, but the new Takenoko uh, expansion, Chibis. Mm -hmm. Pretty cute. And, uh, that's pretty fun. We're excited about that. And there's uh, Champions of Midgard. Uh, by Gray Fox Games is going to be there as well. And that's another one I'm excited about. Yeah. So there you go, Beard and Board Games. There's your question answered before I even had a chance to t ask the question. <laughs> what are you looking forward to? <laughs> uh, yes, I was looking forward to Chibis as well. I never played it, though, unfortunately. It was there. I was looking at it at Paris Ludic, man. Circumstances being as they were, I never got a chance to play it. Oh. Wow, you just got small and then really big again, Kevin. Actually. <laughs> yeah, I have some technology challenges. I have to use my my wi I live out in the the rural community, and so I have to actually use a cellular signal to uh, get on the internet at high speed. So, mm -hmm. okay, <laughs> yeah, you got some yeah, noise in the background running around a, w a wheel, yeah. <laughs> So, Suzanne, why don't you give us a little bit of a rundown of, you know, you kind of represent those of them that Jen can't. Tell us a little That's bit right. about that and what's going on. Well, Jen can't started last year uh, during or just before Jen Con as just a lot of people on social media were talking about you know, how excited they were about Gen Con and all the different games, exactly kind of what you say, Gavin, where they're talking about all the amazing games and expansions and accessories that they get to check out at, um, at Gen Con. And I think some of us were kind of, you know, the people who couldn't go, we were kind of bemoaning the fact that, you know, we couldn't go and, and wouldn't it be cool. And um, Jason Patterson, who's uh, at 
the Naked Meeple on Twitter, and I were just bantering back and forth, and somehow the hashtag Jen Can't came up, and we, yeah, exactly, um, and somehow it just it just really touched a nerve, and we did a couple of funny tweets, and they just took off, and people jumped on it, and it it just exploded last year, and we basically pulled together a virtual experience, I won't call it a convention necessarily, but a virtual experience for people who weren't at Gen Con um, that hopefully gave them some fun stuff to do and some fun conversations and a few prizes as well uh, during all the Gen Con hubbub. So it was kind of like, I don't know, a consolation prize, so to speak, for everybody that couldn't go to Gen Con. You know, last year, the first time I heard about Gen Con, I didn't even quite get it at first. Well, so what are they saying? And I, the first episode of Rolling Dice and Taking Names with Marty and Tony that I listened to was their Jen Cant episode. Oh, that's funny. Aww. And, but that episode, I laughed and laughed. I was out mowing the lawn. I still remember it. And it was, <laughs> af <laughs> and it was after that episode of listening to them, I put them in my skew, and they're one of my favorite podcasts. Yep. They're great. I love those guys. <laughs> I can imagine you in your, your mowing your lawn on your in your quad, your four by four thing, <laughs> and your neighbours are doing their lawns as well, and they're thinking, "What the? <laughs> he's just killed my cat! I bet you he's killed my cat!" <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that's not good. Quickly. That didn't go well. Wow. You just alienated all of our cat audience, okay? Well, Gosh. it's okay, because nobody on the internet likes cats, so I think you're safe. Oh, right, right. That's exactly right. Yep. <laughs> Spaghetti um, cat. So why can't, we, why can't we all on the internet who don't like cats just live next to each other so we haven't got cats coming in our garden and leaving little brown things? That's what I'd like. I love I love cats, there, I love cats, cats there, but I just can't there. finish one in a sitting. Oh no! What? Did you... Wow! <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, that was just off the rails. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna, that play I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna do a new trailer for the ba uh, Berkey and Badger show, and uh, I'm gonna put that in there. Yeah, good. that that'll build you fans pretty quick, huh? <laughs> so tell us more about Gen Cat. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Nice segue. Um, so we're doing it again this year. There seems like there was a lot of community support and uh, enthusiasm around doing Gen Cant 2015. And I've kind of been trying to organize it, talking about cats, right? It's a lot like herding cats. That's oh. H-U-R-D, not H-U-R-T. Um, right. It's, it's crazy. There's a ton of stuff going on. It was actually really interesting. This year, I had publishers asking me, hey, are you doing that thing again? What can we do to help? You know, oh. and um, so, again, this year, I had a little more time to prep, right, than three hours, <laughs> like last year. And so this year, we've got um, a photo contest, and we'll have where people can take photos of their Gen Cant experience and share those on our board game. Uh, we're going to have a geek list, actually. So you can share it on Board Game Geek or you can share it on Twitter. And um, the winner of the photo contest will you know, win a little prize pack. Uh, and then for everybody else who either doesn't want to participate or doesn't win the photo contest or whatever, we also just have a, a raffle, right? And I think we're up to close to... Like we're above 150 for sure, 150 prizes that we get to wow. hand out that's, this year. That's fantastic. Exactly, so Barry. So, that was my so, piece too. So the gaming community, the the publishers have just, but even though they they're they're targeting a lot of their audience at these booths at Gen Con, spending tons of money, they're getting in on activity outside of the actual fair. Absolutely, it, the the support is overwhelming because I think. The reason Gen Cant seems to be popular with a lot of people in the board gaming community, I think the publishers understand. I mean, I think most board game publishers, when all is said and done, they're board gamers too. Mm -hmm. And they love games, and I'm sure at some point in their life, they wanted to go to Gen Con as well and couldn't, and I think they're really empathetic. I think they also know that far more of their fans or far more of their consumer base is not attending Gen Con than is. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I think that they really want to 
show that they appreciate and recognize that and want to give something back to those people that want to be part of the extravaganza and can't be. Um, so it's kind of cool because, you know, I think, not to be mean, but, uh, you know, I kind of think about that push through the doors and the rush of people to get to the booth and you have to map it all out ahead of time. Like, okay, I'm going to go here first and there first. Okay, my friend is going to go grab that game for me and I'm going to go over here, right? And like, all to get these hot new games and I'm just like, we're just giving it away to somebody that, you know, gets lucky and, and uh, everybody has an equal shot and there's no rushing around and somebody's going to walk away with, you know, a hot new Gen Con release or even pre-release game uh, without going to all that effort. And I that kind of makes me smile. I think that's pretty cool. It's fantastic. And I think, you know, you'd follow it on tr Twitter and uh, what's the, what is the Twitter uh, URL again? Uh, the hashtag? Yeah, the hashtag. Is it just Gen Camp? Yeah, so you can kind of, when you talk about Gen Cant or want to partake in Gen Cant on Twitter, uh, you just have to make sure that you add the hashtag Gen Cant, and then people who set up little feed readers that, you know, pick up on all that conversation. Like, for example, I have a feed reader that I can see all conversations that have Gen Cant in it, and so I can kind of follow along. Um, or then there's a Gen Cant Twitter uh, handle, which is at Gen Cant nice and simple and, and predictable, that people can follow as well. And that's primarily used to make sure we're sharing kind of official Gen Cant news and information there um, so people can kind of um, have a single source of truth, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But for people who want to know more, there is a website. It's www.gencant.com. I don't think dub, you have dub, to say dub, 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 dub anymore, dub, right? Dub, what, what, <laughs> dub, 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 three men in a tub. Exactly. What about a Saturday night? Okay, yep. So GenCant.com um, has uh, that's where we're posting all of like the official information about the raffles and the photo contests and some of the other activities that we're gonna be doing like playing some Mysterium and some concept that'll all be um, on GenCant.com um, and one thing since you're giving me this opportunity I do want to point out because I realize that this question has kind of come up a couple of times now GenCant there's actually been a lot of buzz uh, in the social media spheres about Jen Cant over the last couple of weeks, which is thrilling and awesome, but I think it's created this misperception that we're actually in Jen Cant right now. Um, but Jen Cant is actually a virtual convention uh, that coincides with Gen Con. So Jen Cant hasn't started yet. It doesn't start until the 30th. So uh, for people who are curious about like how they can enter the photo contest or how they can enter the raffle and things like that, um, don't worry, you have not missed anything yet because Gen Cant hasn't started yet. Um, it starts on the 30th, and we'll have lots of news, and the raffle links will be open and all that other stuff. So um, don't worry, you haven't are, missed anything. We're just excited. Now, are you going to be having some daily things for Gen Cant during Gen Con? Uh, we are going to have different little daily activities for Gen Cant on... Um, it, you know, in the social media spheres, uh, they'll be on Twitter, of course. So if you're on Twitter, I do recommend you try to follow Jen Cant so you can kind of keep up on it. Um, but fully recognizing that not everybody wants to be on Twitter or, you know, can keep up with all the madness that is that crazy world. Uh, we also have a board game geek guild uh, for Jen Cant. Can't. And so if you search guilds uh, for Gen Cant, it'll pop right up. And all of the con like all the little games and things like that will be posted there as well. So you don't have to be on Twitter to partake in all the, the good stuff. Oh, okay. Do you have some uh, operatives at Gen Con uh, reporting from Gen Con for Gen Cant? Well, we just might have that. Um, as released today was the first video from uh, our team of intrepid investigators, Chaz Marler and Marty Cannell, who um, are representing uh, Gen Cant. They are attending Gen Con, but um, I think that they're, the stories they may tell may not be quite the stories some people might expect. So hopefully people will enjoy those videos. They're the first one released today, and I highly encourage people to go and watch it because um, I think it's pretty amusing. Yeah, the uh, they vests. are very <laughs> invested. <laughs> yes. You, yes. You, should, you should investigate the, the videos on YouTube. Oh, very, please. It's so painful. <laughs> Wonderful. 
I like those vests, actually. They've got pretty pockets and stuff you can put stuff in. They're like dice and, and cards and stuff with big vests. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm losing you guys. I'm ecstatic. <laughs> I don't know. The, your, the your cellular Wi-Fi must be breaking up. Well, these vests are like aren't beige. These beautiful beigey colors too, and they got buttons. <laughs> but, yeah. I was wow. gonna ask if if you if you did bought a, a like a flying drone that you get camera on it and you were gonna take it to Gen Can a uh, Gen Con and uh, fly it around just to say, look, we're not at Gen Can a Gen Can. <laughs> Gen Gen Con, but we need some live footage. Wow, that is... I'm so disappointed you didn't bring that idea to me earlier because that's such a great idea. Where were you, Barry? Where were you? Come on, man. Sorry, sorry. I was just thinking of it then. You said you were going to send some intrepid explorers. I was thinking, oh, that would be good, a drone. Are you going to do the same for Essen? That's the other question I want to ask. An Essen can. Or an <laughs> yeah, I want an Essen can. An S out or an S ain't. Yeah. yeah like or somebody that. said yeah. the word like Verg in Germany was like Verg Essen. I don't know. Um, so let me answer a question that you didn't ask first. And then I meant I'll to ask it. I really yeah. did. So Barry, for especially interest of you, one of the great things about Gen Cant is that it is worldwide because people can't go to Gen Con from all over the world. And who are we mm -hmm. to discriminate and exclude, right? So all of our photo contests, uh, our photo contest, our raffle, and then just the silly fun games are, of course, we welcome participants from anywhere. Um, the, the prize donors are incredibly generous, and while not all of the prizes that I've got commitment for are available worldwide, I would say well over, well around at least 35% of the prizes I have are available to be shipped worldwide, and so... Um, I have the raffle system designed so that um, uh, when we have international winners, we'll make sure that they are only eligible for prizes they can actually get shipped to. But that way, everybody's included. And because um, I've had a couple people, quite, you know, like, "Oh, I live in Germany," or "I live in, you know, England," and I'm like, "Great, no problem," uh, which is one of the benefits of Gen Cant. Yes. Um, yes. So you, sir, in France, are more than welcome to partake. I am and on I the page already. I have partaken. I've left a comment for you. I don't know oh, you oh, dear. oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared now. Um, <laughs> as to answer the um, other question that you actually did ask, Essen. So one of the interesting things out of Gen Cant last year is that then for every significant con since Gen Con last year, I have people talking like, what about Norigens? Or what about, uh, <laughs> what was, it? somebody had a really cute one for Geek Way, and then there was like Dice Tower Cant, and there was like all of, like, you know, a lot of people were asking like, you know, and, and most of it was just kind of fun chatter. Um, but Essen I get asked about, to be honest, um, not, not, I don't want to sound... You're not interested in Essen. You're not interested in Essen. No, it's not that. Uh, I don't want to sound negative, but I I can't like pulling together this whole crazy weird Gen Cant thing for as grassroots and on the fly and on the cheap as it is. Like it takes a lot of work. It's um, really mushroom too. It's I mean it's gotten yeah. really a big deal. I can tell you going crazy. It's 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 dozens and dozens of emails. It's a ton of organization and coordination and planning and things like that. Uh, I just, I don't have more than one a year in me. If somebody else wants to take it on and I'm happy to consult and give them some suggestions, but, you know, yeah, I don't have it in me. I'll Barry, say this. You could like, do, Barry could take it on. He's good at that stuff. Yeah. Essen, sure? Essen can't, you can do it. I'll From be Essen. there, but... Uh, yeah, if you're going to be there, that's a little tougher, I think. Yeah, yeah, I got my I got my film camera here, and uh, <laughs> I can plug that into a computer and then um, live stream. I hope. How does that work? From your regular digital camera? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. how that works. Exactly. <laughs> well, I think uh, Suzanne, I think it's just fantastic the effort Thank that you're you. putting in this for the hobby and uh, making it a fun event, making it interactive, and then. You know, coordinating all that. That's a, thank you for all the hard work of putting oh, that together. Yeah, my that's, pleasure. People love this, and uh, 
you're, you're making a special special time over something that a lot of people want to go to a conference and all of a sudden they can kind of feel like they're getting to do it. Hopefully, hopefully. And I will just say this, like I'm, like I said earlier, I'm just hurting the cats. Um, but really, Gen Cat truly Ooh. is about the community. Yeah, exactly. It really is about the community and everybody else out there. And Gen Cat doesn't exist and it's not fun if people aren't talking to each other and interacting with each other. So for anybody who's watching this, I can't encourage you enough just to post some comments and ask some questions and talk about the games that are interesting out of Gen Con or talk about how short the line was to the bathroom today or whatever. Um, all in the spirit of Gen Cant and that'll make it um, more fun for everybody. <laughs> Well, I think that's just fantastic, and uh, Gen Con's just around the corner. Uh, we're heading out of Minnesota on Tuesday evening, and we'll be arriving Wednesday night, and anybody that, uh, if you see the Sheriff of Nottingham and the Silk Merchant, please come and greet us. We'd love to talk to you, love to get to meet you. We're having a contest where you can take a picture of us and post it to social media, and you can actually win a copy of the Sheriff of Nottingham, a signed copy with promos. And we're giving away a copy of Operation Faust from Robert Burke Games. Uh, so super excited about the fun we're going to have there. And I uh, would love to get to meet you guys. So Barry, you got anything else you want to talk about with uh, Gen Con, Gen Cant? Um, Gen Cat. Gen Cat. <laughs> Gen Cat. Most it's a Gen new cat. variety of cat that came out in England a couple of years ago. It's very. It's striped with gray. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Very nice. Very luxurious hair. Very luxurious. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's Mr. Miggers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like it when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should wrap up now, Berkey. Um, <laughs> I think we need to say a big, big thank you for um, Suzanne for coming along. Oh, yes. Thank you us. so much, Suzanne. You're awesome, man. Oh, thank you so much for having me on, guys. It was a ton of fun. <laughs> I won't leave too many comments on Jen Cant. I'll let some of the other people win. <laughs> yeah, I'll make your work a lot, a lot harder, I think. <laughs> well, thank you guys for all watching us. You can check us out on the boardgametheater.com. We'll have the audio of this up here in a couple of days, and we'll also have the video links there. You can check us out on Facebook at... Berkey and Badger, or you can reach us on Twitter at my Twitter is Kimpeck or Badger the Brave. There, it's on the screen. No, it's not. <laughs> Always is. It's on the screen. It's supposed to be on the screen. See, there it is. And the Board Game Geek Guild. There's a guild. I like guilds. Look at that guild. Two, two, four, eight. Cool. Way cool. Who'd have thought we'd have a guild? I've been gilded before. Yeah, I've been gilded too. <laughs> Gilded, I mean. No. You know what I mean. So with that, thanks a lot for showing up to the Berkey and Badger show. Woo! Yay! Send us, send us home, Barry. I'm sending you home if the thing works. Technology. So we had this time together. And now it's time to go. It won't be long until we have another show. So keep us in mind, get online, Berkey and Badger will be back in no time.